Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about alpha investments from a purely finance slash, I guess, game store. And I was buying a stompy ground from a person at CVS today and we had a discussion uh, at, about Rudy uh, from alpha investments and his business model. Uh, again, this was a total stranger. I do live around Houston, so I do buy, I'm always buying cards. The older the cards, the better. I have a pet peeve right now, which is I'm only going to buy a card if I pay you more than $50. So $50 has, that's the minimal buy I feel comfortable doing. But we had a discussion on Rudy. One of his friends subscribed to the Patreon deal, which I think it's $10. And then you can buy boxes for around $80. Um, depends on the set, of course. Uh, Amazon, that sounds very familiar model to Amazon Prime, which Rudy and the Manosaurus and the Weds, they're all kind of poo-pooing Amazon when, in fact, Amazon is the future of buying whatever. It's not just magic cards. It's shoes, it's clothing, it's TVs. I buy uh, the drink I'm drinking right now, saying Pellegrino. I got from Amazon. It's like $12.99 and they give you 24 of them. And it's actually cheaper than if I went to ATB, which is a grocery store in Texas, to buy. So why should Magic Cards be any different? If you play Pokemon, you know one of the best places to buy ma uh, Pokemon cards is on Amazon. The prices are incredibly cheap. So that's what Rudy is. Rudy is a private version of Amazon. He is not a WPN. He does not have F&M, and to my knowledge, he may not have any employees. I have never seen or heard of an employee from him. So when you're watching these videos, it's a beta booster, vintage collection, counterfeit magic with a bunch of lotuses, $5,000 unlimited magic to gathering starter deck, reserve list buyout, massive reserve list cards or vintage cards. He's selling standard boxes and buying vintage stuff. That's the business model in a nutshell. And I can tell you it works because that was, I ran out of, it might be because Houston is on the East Coast. Magic cards were more plentiful. At least when I went to school, they were really easy. To, obviously, I went to NYU and New York City, Manhattan. It was easy to get whatever you wanted in New York City any time of night really and yeah I remember buying and selling and it was very easy to do it in New York City as a college student it was really easy to do it even on in Virginia Richmond Virginia was when I did my summer interns and they had a small magic scene but you would see like a bunch of really valuable cards you would see power nine actually now that i think about it it's because uh star city games is in virginia isn't it i want to say it's near richmond so that might be why but it was really easy to obtain these vintage cards now that i'm in houston they're not easy to obtain at all but they're very easy to sell people are that turtis from Arabian Nights, someone bought one of them for $4 for me. That's like a five cent card all day long, right? Like if I rewind and went back, I would never have imagined someone would pay $4 for that really crappy turtle from Arabian Nights. I wouldn't even imagine someone paid four cents, but that's where we are. So Rudy is making a, ton he's making a killing, a killing. So all of these you can see, uh, reserve list this, reserve list that, investing in magic. Let's give away $5,000. Um, magic origin boxes. I remember him telling people to buy that. So his business model is very sound. Sell the standard stuff, make a little bit of money from selling the standard stuff, and then just buy reserve list and sit on it. Do not sell it sit on it and accumulate a massive amount of it and then now you control the marketplace now this is the mtg finance dream and many mtg financiers pretend that they do this but they do not uh it is very obvious why because otherwise they would be rudy and they would have a channel showing you all the cool vintage and power nine cards they have 
And so he is the real deal. He is the real deal, but he is the epitome of he is the what the end result of the local game store looks like. In the future, our local game stores will not have places for people to play Magic. They will not really have FNMs. And we might not even do pre-releases. We might just go on MTG Arena to do our pre-release at midnight or something like that. And I know that's the future because that's the future of Pokemon. That's what Pokemon is right now. Pokemon's super casual. And it's actually the cards are more valuable than... The bulk cards are far more valuable than Magic cards. So the bulk rate for Pokemon is two cents a card. For Magic, it is point... It is one-tenth of a cent. So Pokemon cards are 200... What is that? Two... I'm trying to do some math. It's either 20 or 200 times more valuable than a Pokemon card. Oh, sorry. Pokemon cards are 20 or 200 times more valuable than a Magic card, which tells you all you need to know about is it easy to sell Pokemon cards, which I'm doing very well. And every so often, and you'll see Rudy have a video where the background, he doesn't mention it, but it's all Pokemon. So if you're a local game store owner, I can tell you Pokemon is the future of your game. Like it is very low maintenance. You don't need to report everything to Wizard of Coast. They send anyone pre-release kits. I mean, they sent, they're going to send me some soon. And I didn't send them a picture of my location. I didn't say, oh, X amount of people play. No, just sign, just uh, give them your uh, business address and off you go. So... Rudy's business model is to become like Amazon. That's the end evolution. We won't have local game stores anymore that just do magic. We won't have... It is too competitive. And when you talk about margins, margins is very important for a local game store. Unless that... Like uh, the local game store that Hunter Pence started in Houston, it has really fancy coffee for $7 a cup. Yeah, he's going to make a killing on the coffee so he doesn't care about the booster boxes of Magic. That's just bonus. But FYI, he's selling those booster boxes for 110 which he can do because he is a famous baseball player. Local game stores like my local game store, DNA Comics, they don't do Magic anymore. They don't do pre-releases. They don't do FNMs. There's no point. They lose money from doing that. You lose money from hosting events because your space is valuable. And if you needed to do an event, you have to hire an employee to sit there to and host the event as well as make sure that the number things are entered in the computer, prizes awarded, etc. Or even judging sometimes. The future of magic is no local game store. Uh, that's something that a lot of people do not want to hear. But that is something that I have accepted as well. I was going to open a local game store like the local places that I live at where it has lots of play area. We are only open on Friday and any other day of the week is by appointment, just like Rudy. If you want me to sell me a collection, yeah, I'll meet you in my store. Uh, but actually the collection is already negotiated and I'm just checking conditions and make sure that they're not counterfeits and then the cast is already ready for you to take. So it is possible to still have a Magic the Gathering local game store, but your business model has to be very akin to Rudy. So if you started a new store today, I would tell you to copy his exact business model uh, Pokemon, heavy Pokemon. Pokemon sells like hotcakes. And you know why? Because parents buy it. Parents will not buy their kids magic cards. That is what I found out having a store since uh, January. Parents will come in and say, hey, you know, my kid's really interested in Pokemon. I heard that there's a card game. Can you, you know, can I buy a box? Can I buy some, you know, Pikachus? And it's really cheap because you don't need to sell them the really good Pikachus. That's not what they want. They just want Pikachus. And that two cents of Pikachu that you're buying in, you can sell it for 15 cents and everyone feels good about that. The kid feels good, the parent feels good, and you feel good because you made a very nice margin. You can't do that for magic cards. Hey, let me sell you a demonic tutor for your little son. No, a parent's going to be like, what, what are you doing? Get out of here. 
we had um a an older woman come in and she was buying something for her 11 year old son they didn't even know about magic but they did know about pokemon and she was explaining that he was anti-social and he would you know it's got to be easy for him to use I just, we just told him hey these are some online codes we don't use and just uh, go play online and learn online and you can go play in pokemon day or something like that so oh the other thing is buy reserve list cards and get rid of standard crap Standard is really in a bad place right now in terms of expected value. I know people are very high on Guilds of Ravnica, but that model is not going to exist. I mean, Rudy understands this. He doesn't do his box openings anymore. He sells the boxes. He sells the boxes through his Patreons. And then he uses that money to buy reserveless cards. I mean, it's a very successful model. And I think every game store should look to copy it and mimic it. Anyway... That's my opinions. Let me know in the comments below what you think about his model. Do you feel like I missed anything? Uh, it's pretty much Amazon Prime for Magic cards. And that's why Amazon Prime might be tiny, a tiny bit scary for him. Because if they can cut the price to $80 shipping, yikes. And that would destroy everyone's business, right? Not just his. It would destroy everyone's business. But it might happen. I would love for a distributor... To get on that Amazon Prime and sell it for $76 direct to the customer shipped. And they could. Their margins, the distribution margins are there. Now, the local game store will absolutely get slaughtered. But, you know, you can whine and complain about it. Or you can be like, oh, this is the future. Let me prepare for it. Bye, guys.